Hello, and welcome back to the Small Step YouTube channel. My name is Linda Ikechuku, and I'm a developer advocate here at Small Step Labs. Today, I'd like to help you understand what provisioners are within the Small Step ecosystem and also show you our new provisional management UI feature. Now, before I get into that, let's define and describe what provisioners are. If you've delved a bit into the small step ecosystem, then you've probably come across the term provisioners. Provisioners are a proprietary lingo within the small step ecosystem, and they're very foundational to how the small step certificate manager works. Let me explain. The small step platform supports different protocols or methods for obtaining certificates tailored for different workflows, entities, and endpoints. Each certificate issuance method or protocol has its own authorization policies and configuration requirements. And this is where provisioners come in. Think of provisioners as endpoints on the Small Step Certificate Authority that implements the different supported certificate issuance methods. They are mostly responsible for two things. One is to verify that the entity requesting a certificate is indeed authorized to contact the CA and is eligible to request a certificate based on the authorization or authentication policy necessary for the certificate issuance method in question. The second thing provisioners do is that they define configuration options like certificate templates, default minimum and maximum certificate lifetime, and renewal policies that are ideal for that particular certificate issuance method. So think of it as like obtaining identity documents for a car, a pet, or yourself. These identity documents are all overseen by the same government, but you must visit different organizations within the same government to obtain them. For example, the driving license organization does not issue national identification cards or passports. So, while you might use a single CA to issue certificates to all of your endpoints, depending on what you want to use the certificate to identify or what kind of workflow you're trying to achieve or implement, you have to go through a corresponding provisioner that has the capacity to do exactly what you want. As I just explained, the small step platform features different provisioner types to support different workflows. So whichever provisioner you choose will depend on two things. One, the entity or endpoint for which a certificate is required. And two, the type of certificate issuance workflow to be implemented. Is it going to be automated? Is it going to be semi-automated? Or is it going to be completely manual? On the Small Step platform, there are nearly a dozen different provisional types to choose from. But the most common used by most of our users are ACME, OIDC, and JWK. I'll explain what these three provisioners do. The ACME provisioner uses the popular open source ACME protocol to automate certificate issuance from a small step certificate authority to web endpoints or devices. It's the thing that contacts ACME clients and asks them to 
solve a corresponding ACME challenge in order to prove control or ownership over an IP address, a URL, or a device ID contained in a certificate request. Upon successful validation, it's also the thing that grants the client access to receive certificates from a small step certificate authority. Our ACME provisioner is compatible with all major ACME clients such as Setbot, Cardin, and a lot more. Secondly, we have the OIDC provisioner. The OIDC provisioner is for getting certificate to humans. For example, if you want developers on your team to obtain client or user certificates for assessing internal resources, you would set up an OIDC provisioner that would make use of your preferred IDP, aka identity provider. This would allow developers to be authenticated and issued short-lived certificates via SSO using identity providers like Google, Okta, or Azure Active Directory. Then we have the JWK Provisioner. The JWK Provisioner is ideal for workflows that best work with password authentication. So each JWK Provisioner has a private key which will be encrypted with a password of your choosing. When a JWK Provisioner receives a certificate request, it prompts for the encryption password. And when the correct password is entered, the JWK Provisioner issues a certificate signing request signed by its private key. Then the CA can then issue a certificate after verifying that the request has been signed with the JWK's private key using its public key. For more information on choosing a provisioner for your desired use case, please see our provisioner documentation linked in the description below. This is exciting. The new provisional management UI on the Small Step platform allows you to create, edit, remove, and view provisioners on your authorities without needing to interact with the CLI. With the new provisional management UI, there is no need to go back and forth to the docs to look up commands. First, I'm going to create a default authority. And I'll name my authority, Linda's authority. Then I'll also change the subdomain just because. So we've successfully created an authority. Scrolling down, you see that there is an already pre-created provisioner on our new authority. So by default, when you create a new hosted authority on the small step platform, it comes with an OIDC provisioner, which will be used to authenticate you, the authority admin, via OIDC for administrative actions. Now, as you can see, there is an add provisioner button and we'll click on that to add a provisioner. From this UI, we can add either a JWK provisioner, an ACME provisioner, or an OICD provisioner. Let's try adding an ACME provisioner. I'll leave all other options as the default. Now we're back to the authority view page. And if we scroll down, 
we can see our newly created ACME provisioner is now part of the provisioners list for our authority. And we can also view details of the newly created ACME provisioner. So you can see details such as default set duration, minimum set duration, and maximum set duration. Scroll up and you'll see that there's an edit button attached to the provisioner. If we click on that button, we should be able to edit configuration options of the provisioner. I'm going to switch up the certificate duration and make it 60 days instead of one. I'll click next and now when we go back to the provisional view page, you can see that the default SAT duration has been updated from one day to 60 days. Next, let's try and delete this provisional and see what happens. Click on delete. Now, when we go back to our authority view page, as expected, you can see that our ACME provisioner is no longer part of the provisional list on our authority. And that's it. That's the provisional UI management future. I hope this demo has been helpful for you. And don't forget that you can reach out to us with any questions that you have. And if you're new here, we have a Discord community where we all hang out. Links in the description. Do join us. Catch you later. Bye.